Hi, in this problem we're being asked if this improper integral converges or diverges. And there are two ways um, to do this problem. Uh, method one is to just try to work it out uh, and see what you get. So try to integrate this and you get a number, then it converges. Um, if you don't get a number, then it diverges. Method two is to use something uh, called the comparison test. The comparison test is a test that allows you to compare an improper integral to another improper integral, and um, you can use it to help determine convergence or divergence. So we're gonna use two tests in this problem, the comparison test and the p-test. So let me just briefly uh, tell you what the p-test is. The p-test says, if you have the integral of one over x to the p from one to infinity with respect to x, uh, if p is bigger than 1, this will converge. Okay, this integral converges. If p is less than or equal to 1, then this integral diverges. The comparison test, this is called the p-test. So the goal here is going to be to compare it to, a, to uh, an integral like this, one of these p integrals. I just made that up, but I'm not sure if they have a name. We can call them p integrals. Um, yeah, so the comparison test... So the comparison test is a very powerful test. It's very similar to the comparison test for uh, infinite series. Um, it basically says if you have two functions, let's just say f and g, and they're both positive, and let's just say this is true on, say, the interval a infinity, you have, you have two conditions here. The first condition says if the bigger one converges. So if the integral of the bigger one converges, I'll just say g from a to infinity. So if this one converges, then the smaller one also converges. Okay, the smaller one will also converge. And two, oh, and, and this should make sense intuitively. Uh, if you think about just a simple graph, let's say this is the graph of g. And then we know that f is smaller than g. Well, if g converges, it has to have a finite area, right? You can think of this improper integral as an area. But f is smaller, so therefore f must also have a finite area. So uh, in some sense, it says if the area under g is finite, since f is smaller than g, the area under f is also finite. That's just one way um, to think about it, perhaps. Conversely, um, if if f, so if the integral of f diverges, means it doesn't, let's just say it doesn't have a finite area, well, g is bigger. So if g is bigger than f and f doesn't have a finite area, then g also does not have a finite area. So this also diverges. Just a cool way uh, to, to think about it. So kind of a, a fun way. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can figure this problem out. So here we have uh, the improper integral from 3, uh, I already forgot what, to infinity d dx ln x. And I haven't done this yet. I haven't done this problem yet. Um, so I just thought I would try it and see how it goes. So we need to compare it to something. Let's think about the graph of ln x. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And so ln x has a vertical asymptote at zero. We know that much. And it crosses at one, and it does something like this. And we're starting at three, so that's over here. So let's see, at three, what is the value of the natural log of three? It's like, it's like 1.0986, I don't, it's like 1.1. Roughly something like that, 1.1. I don't have a calculator within arm's reach. It's like 1.1. But if you think about y equals x, well, that's going to be 3. So certainly ln x is smaller than x for x greater than or equal to 3. So we could say that. We could say that ln x is less than or equal to x, right, for x bigger than 3. It's pretty clear from the graph. Right? We're not asked to do a proof or anything like that. So we can just use our intuition in our minds and come up with things. And if we divide both sides by x and ln x, that's going to give us 1 over x less than or equal to 1 over ln x. Reading that backwards, that tells us that 
one over the natural log of x is greater than or equal to one over x. By the way, all of this is positive, right? So I'm just gonna say it and not write it, but that needs to be said. Both, both integrands are positive on the interval that is specified. That's one of the conditions of the comparison test. It's just a subtle point. And we know something, and the improper integral from three to infinity of one over x dx, this diverges by the p-test, so by the p-test, since, since p is equal to one, which is less than or equal to one, right? So it diverges by the p-test. Recall that that was one of the conditions for divergence uh, on the p-test. So therefore, so I'll use the three little dots. Let me just say our original integral, our OG integral, the one we started with, this one up here, also diverges by the comparison test, right? The comparison test. Comparison, comparison test. And this is just a, a you know a calc two problem. Um, if you take calc two, uh, you may or may not see this topic. Um, in the past, when when I've taught calc two, this is something I always go over because I like it. Um, it's kind of cool. It's a it's a nice uh, transition uh, into series or from series. It's very very similar. So yeah, cool problem. I like the comparison test. I like thinking about it this way. Uh, I hope this video has uh, helped you in some way, and hopefully you have learned uh, something, even just a little bit. Good luck.